Hello, this is the sign test for research methods. Uh, if I can remind you to write your Cornell notes as you're watching this, uh, if I ask any questions, write them at the bottom. Uh, once the video is finished, then complete this section of your mind map um, and then go on to read uh, the, the textbooks on this section. OK, so I'm going to do this a little differently uh, for this video. I might come back and edit it for um, the mind map. Um, but what I'm going to show you now is how to complete the sign test. In an exam, you might be asked to complete it from scratch, but that's probably quite unlikely. You might be asked to identify S or identify N. And this is a very, very easy um, test to complete. You just need to know the steps to go along. Um, so I'm going to walk you through this now. So we use a sign test where the difference is predicted between two sets of data, like an experiment. Um, and this test looks at the direction of the uh, difference and tells you also the strength of the difference between these sets of scores. Um, as you can see, we've got participant one, experiment and control condition. So this is a repeated measures design and it's nominal data. Um, so you can see the sign test if you do the inferential statistics video. Um, and this is the only stats test that we'd ask to work out and that's because it is very easy. OK, let's have a little look at this. Then. So we need to get S and we need to get N. What we're going to do first is in each value, we're going to um, subtract the control condition to the experimental condition. Actually, it doesn't matter if you minus the experimental condition from the control condition or the control condition from the experimental. It'll, it'll still turn out um, correctly. So we just subtract one from the other. So, for example, in this situation, for participant number one, we have nine minus 11 that would equal minus two. What we're going to do next, once we've filled in um, all the numbers, we're going to count the number of times a less frequent sign occurs. What this will work out is it'll give us S. So we'll already have S. And just so I can show you visually, um, that is the um, step one. You can see nice and easy, just addition and subtraction. And then I've highlighted the different signs. You can see we've got one, two, three, four, five minuses, so it certainly isn't minus, and we have one, two positives. So the least frequent sign, our S, is two. So what our least frequent sign is, is it is all the people in our experiment who didn't do what we expected them to do. So think about that a moment. We've done our experiment, some people have gone one way, some people have gone the other. We're trying to suggest that our experimental condition has an effect. So the people who went against what we expect them to do makes our experimental data weaker. So the more people that didn't do what we expect them to do, the less likely it is that our results are going to be significant. So here we've got 10 participants, seven of which you can see that there's been a difference in. Five of them went the way we expected, but two of them went against what we expected. So now we can fill in S of two. And that might be all you're asked to do in an exam is just figure out what S is. OK, now we need to figure out what N is. Well, to figure out N, our number of participants, then we work out all the participants we saw a difference in. We're not interested in those participants who we didn't see a difference between the conditions. We can just forget about them. They are gone to us. So the remaining participants are the seven with a sign. So now we have s of 2 and n of 7. Now we can work out whether our data is significant or not. So we're going to look now at a table of critical values for the sign test. We're going to read down from n, number of participants, until we get to the number we want, which is 7. We're going to go across from 7 to zero point, the column which has 0 0.05 for a one-tailed test. So we're going to say this is directional. So the critical value at this point look where it is right it's zero the reason it's zero is because we have so few participants in this study we only have seven participants not a single person could not do what we expect for our results to be significant and as we can see from the data we had two people not doing what we expect so clearly we're going to have to reject this if we had had uh, 12 participants and two people hadn't done what we expected we could have accepted that because it has to be left than or equal to. But unfortunately, it's 
two people went against what we expected and we could have had only had zero. Um, if we'd had everyone going the way we expected, we could have accepted it, but that just isn't the case. So state the conclusion. As a result, it's not significant at p equals less than minus 0 0.05 a uh, one tail for a one tail test we just can't accept the, uh, the hypothesis or the alternate hypothesis so we're going to have to accept the null hypothesis and that's it that's how you do a, a sign test from start to finish um, you might only be expected to do a small amount or work out um, what it means but honestly that's the uh, that's all there is to it okay best of luck if you get that question